Hello and welcome to online learning. Now I envision there's going to be basically two types of students or at least two uh, directions that students are going to be in. First is going to be the tech savvy student. That's the student that's grown up around computers, around electronic devices and is really familiar and very comfortable operating in that environment. And for you, this uh, video may be a little bit below your skill level, may be a little bit below uh, what you already know about computers. Then there's the other end of the, expect the spectrum. There's a dinosaur like me who grew up having to change channels by walking across the room, uh, only had 13 channels on, uh, on the dial, and uh, we've grown up um, with computers being introduced into our lives slowly, and we're probably not as tech savvy uh, as those of you who've been exposed to them your whole life long. So. Uh, this video is more geared towards that, more geared towards helping you with understanding the, th the systems and tools you're going to need to be successful in online learning. So first of all, for online learning, the most important tool you're going to need is a computer. I mean, that kind of goes without saying, but not all computers are the same. Now, it can be a laptop, which is basically what I have here. This is a laptop type computer. It has programs, it has a processor, it has memory, it has the ability to connect with the internet, and it has some features in it. And then you all may have be familiar with what's called a PCU or a desktop unit where you, you have your computer and your monitor and it's, it's pretty much not, uh, not easy to carry around. It's, it's a big bulky machine. That's going to be uh, basically your PC or your home computer. And you may be operating on different types of systems. It may be an Apple, it might be a, a PC. So whatever system you're using, there's some basics that you need to know. First of all, speed. The computer should be within a couple of years old. About two uh, to three years would be the max that I would say. And if you're getting into online learning and you don't have a good computer or a newer computer, uh, it's easy to go down to Walmart. They have some very nice computers that are very reasonable. Uh, I think between two and three hundred dollars you can walk out of there with something that will work perfect for what you're going to need in the online class network. This type of computer here uh, actually this one's about five years old and it works pretty good. Um, it, it does have its drawbacks. Um, but uh, essentially it's a laptop computer, it's portable, I can take it anywhere I want. It has the ability to connect wirelessly to the internet, uh, either through um, a internet connection that's available or I can uh, hook it up to one of my uh, uh, devices, either my phone uh, or my pad, and then it can connect to the internet that way as well. So uh, it has that internet connection capability. Uh, it also has uh, uh, some software that you're going to need. And um, in addition to this video, there's going to be resources on my PHCC and on the uh, uh, academic technology uh, links that we have within the, uh, the program and within the course that's going to tell you about the requirements. But we found that with a system, Canvas, that we're working with, the best platform or the best um, browser to use is Google Chrome or Firefox. Now, what am I talking about when I talk about browsers? Essentially, you have your computer, and your computer allows you to access the internet. Okay, so you go out there and you access the internet, and then in the internet itself, there's so many things that you can do. You can watch video, you can do, uh, you can purchase things, you can, you know, view things, you can look at pictures, you can download all of that. Well, the browser is what enables you to access that material, and inside that browser are certain plugins, like video plugins and, and things that allow you to do multiple things at once, and processors and stuff like that. So the browser is what helps you use the content on the internet. And for the purposes of our online learning Canvas uh, platform, the best browser is Canvas uh, for Canvas is Google Chrome. Um, internet Explorer. Uh, if you have any of the uh, Internet Explorers and there's different versions, each, each time they come up with an improvement, they introduce a new version or they, they have a better, you know, it, it, it's a better operable system, so they come up with some kind of uh, improvement. They call it another, another version, like for example, I think they're up to Internet Explorer version 12 or 9 or something like that. Anyhow, every time they come up with a new change, it, it, it helps to integrate some of the systems out there. But what we found so far, and, and I've done a lot of experimenting going out to different locations and accessing the program, is that Google Chrome seems to work the best. Now, if you own your PC, it's yours and you can do whatever you want, you can download Google Chrome. Basically, you go to the Google website and it'll have information and instructions. It's free. 
You download it to your computer and you can check, you can select whether or not you want that to be your browser that you use all the time or if you, if you like Internet Explorer, you can use the Internet Explorer and then you can keep Google Chrome as something that you would have to open up. But when you open up Canvas, it's recommended that you open it up in Google Chrome or the other one is Firefox that's uh, a little bit um, different uh, type of format but it's, again, it's a browser and enables you to access information off of the Internet. Okay. Okay, another uh, important part of what you're going to need uh, in the online, obviously, is going to be access to the Internet. Now, there's a number of different ways that you can access the Internet. You can access the Internet through what they call dial-up, where, in other words, you have a phone plug that plugs into your computer, and you plug it into the wall, and you essentially use your, phone, your computer like a phone. It dials into the service, and it communicates with the service back and forth over the phone. Now, there's some limitations to that. Most phone services now today are digital, but back in the day they were analog. And you had a little difficulty being able to communicate over a phone modem because it had limitations as far as speed. And I think even still today, most phone modems are limited in terms of speed. And I'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about how a computer works. But essentially, speed is going to be a, a very important factor in how quickly you can get things downloaded onto your computer and how quickly and, and how well the movies and, and, for, and the different uh, resources that we have are going to work on your computer. So I would strongly recommend probably not using a dial-up connection. Now, the second type of connection that you have is called a, a direct or a dedicated service line, what they call DSL. Uh, dedicated service lines... Uh, go into a different port on your computer. They usually run through, and, and please, if you know more about this than I do, I'm giving you the Reader's Digest version and, and the comprehension level that I have of computers. But your DSL operates off of a different uh, port. It goes directly into your computer through that Ethernet port. And that Ethernet port is designed to handle information at a faster rate. The cabling and the wiring in there is able to take information at a quicker rate. Dedicated service lines also don't carry phone conversations, which are, are very cumbersome and they take up a lot of space on the phone line, so they can transfer information a lot quicker. And then you have what's called fiber optics, which enables the information to travel a lot faster. So the, the better the dedicated service line, it depends on the speed, is going to give you the faster service, the faster download times. But your dedicated service line is essentially a plug-in. You, you may have an external modem. You may have an internal modem in your computer. You may be able to plug directly into it, uh, and you'll be able to communicate back and forth. Now, that's a dedicated service line. Now, the next type of Internet service that you could have is uh, what we call Wi-Fi or wireless Internet. Now, wireless Internet can be a, a couple of different things. For example, you can have a dedicated service line to your house, like I have um, uh, Embark has uh, dedicated service lines, so I have DSL at my house, and I have a wireless router attached to that, so I can access the internet off of my laptop. Uh, I'm still using a dedicated service line, but I'm communicating with the line instead of having it plugged into my computer. I'm communicating with that DSL through what's called a wireless system. Okay, and then there's another type of wireless system which you might find in smartphones and tablets and some of the other type of computers, such as the iPad and stuff like that, if they're equipped. Uh, they can communicate directly with the internet service provider, your, what you call your ISP, uh, through, the, through the waves, through the airwaves, um, either through a, a cellular phone line or some kind of connection that's established. Now, don't confuse wireless internet with what you can get when you go into like Starbucks or McDonald's. That's a form of wireless internet, but it's still probably operating off of what's called a dedicated service line. So the limitations to that is still going to be whatever that dedicated service line is. And then finally, and then I really don't have a lot of information about this, but finally you have what's called uh, um, satellite internet. And satellite internet um, is basically internet that is, is communicated through a modem uh, to your computer. It can either be wireless or it can be through a connection that goes to your satellite dish that communicates with a satellite that is equipped to handle information, exchange information. Um, again, just like with everything, satellite is, is contingent upon the weather, so a rainy day like we've been having lately um, is going to be uh, a problem for you in terms of connectivity. Okay? Now, I'm going to take a break here and I'm going to talk a little bit about how a computer works. Okay, so let's take a computer. A computer has a lot in common with a fire engine. Okay? And I, I know don't put me in the rubber room yet, but I'm going to kind of show you how it does. In a computer, there's a couple of things that you look for. First of all, you look for a computer that has speed. 
Speed deals with how fast the computer is able to process things. And if you use a gaming computer, you want a computer that, you know, when you play in uh, video games and things, you want a computer that's fast. It has a processor speed that's fast. The second thing is capacity, hard drive, how much the computer can hold. You can store files on it, put programs. Bigger programs require more hard drive. So hard drive space is important, too. And then the third thing is the connectivity, the way you get information out of the computer to access the internet or virtual world or connect with a, a network or something like that. So those three factors uh, are important in a computer. Okay? So well, let's look at how a computer relates to a fire engine. Well, in a fire engine, we look at three things. We look at, well, how much can it pump? Pump has to do with speed or fast. How much water can I put out? Second, tank. That how much water it holds, how much water I can bring to the fire scene. And then the third thing is hose lines. That's how fast I can get water back into the engine or how fast I can pump water out. So if you look at the computer and the engine, all right, your pump is equivalent to your processor speed. So if I have an engine that can pump a thousand gallons per minute, that's pretty fast. You know, that can give me a lot of water. So that processor speed deals with how fast that computer can process and do information, how fast that fire engine can put water out. The second thing is the tank, the storage, the hard drive for, for, for the fire engine. The bigger the tank, the more water I can bring with me. Well, if I'm in a rural area, I need water. We all know that water is what we put fires out with for the most part, so I need water to have there. So I consider my tank kind of like the hard drive on a computer. The bigger the tank, the more information I can store on my computer. The bigger the hard drive, uh, the more water I can carry, you know, th those things. And then finally, the hose line. Well, what's a hose line? Well, that's how we get water in and how we put water out. Supply lines are big, brings a lot of water in. And sometimes our hand lines are smaller, but if we have a big fire, we may use a larger diameter hand line. So think about this as your internet connection. Uh, for example, uh, when I talked about dial-up, dial-up is a little bit slower. So dial-up might be the equivalent of using a three-inch line for supply line, okay? Uh, and, and maybe a, an inch and three-quarter line for, uh, for putting the fire out. Uh, but if we have something like a DSL where I have a direct connect to my computer, uh, I'm, I, you know, I have high speed, maybe like 4G or 3G speed, or I have uh, um, uh, fiber optics, which is a little bit quicker or what have you, then that hose line becomes bigger. So my supply line might be like a 4-inch or 5-inch line, so I've got a lot of water coming in, and I might be putting out uh, on master stream. So I might be supplying uh, a 3-inch or 4-inch master stream, or I might be supplying some water out. I have equivalent, or I might even be using the big gun, the deck gun, putting a lot of water out. Uh, so again, think about this uh, it, it, as it relates to the fire service and, and, and your engine. Your computer has to be, it has to be fast, okay? It has to be uh, able to store a lot of information, and it has to be able to exchange information quickly. Just like a fire engine has to have a good pump, all right, fast enough to carry the water or send the water out, a good tank and be able to store the water, and then good hose lines to be able to get the water to where it needs to go. Okay, so now we're back. So we talked about the computer, we talked about the speed. Speed's important. Uh, we talked about the internet connection, that's going to be important. Uh, we talked about the, the, the size of your hard drive, and, and, and you can use external hard drives or thumb drives to extend that. So that's important as well, but not as as important. Uh, but again, having the computer to be able to do the things that you need it to do uh, is going to be very important for you. All right, some other tools that you're going to need. One of the ways that um, I wanted to make this course a little more interactive, uh, the ability to communicate with the students uh, on a face-to-face -face basis, which you lose in, a, you know, in an online program, uh, because that's really where you get in a classroom. When you're in a classroom, you get to interact face-to-face, -face, uh, students get to talk to one another, and you get to see the emotion uh, when they talk. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do to kind of bring that into the online world and to include that in the online classroom uh, is our discussion board postings. Now in Canvas there's an ability for you to do um, post online video uh, in a number of different ways. For our discussion boards, uh, and I will show you in a separate uh, video that's going to be a little bit more, it's a web capture video that you're going to be, uh, that's going to be attached to this introduction module. Uh, when you look in there, there'll be a way that you can click on that and if you have what's called a web camera Okay, a web camera you can record directly from your computer into the program. Uh, so you can sit in front of your computer and you can record your, uh, your video statements or whatever you're uploading into the discussion board uh, from that.
A second way that you can do that if you don't have a web camera or if you want to do something different in the way you present your information uh, is you can use either a video camera like I have set up there or if you have a digital camera that's able to take video you can have somebody videotape you making your presentation or you can use a tripod like I have set up here. Uh, a third way that you can record your discussion board assignments uh, if you have what's called a, a smartphone, okay? Smartphone is capable of recording video and you can either download that video and again it's going to depend on how tech savvy you are. You can either download that video to your computer or you can email it to yourself uh, or Canvas does have an app that you can set up for the smartphone so you can send your information to that app and upload it directly into your discussion board assignment. But again, this is what I want to kind of do to kind of get you into that uh, virtual classroom well, so you can interact with your students. You see what they look like, you can put a face to, uh, to a name uh, and uh, you can communicate a little bit easier uh, and, and communicate with the ability to express emotion and things like that. Uh, so that is going to be part of uh, the requirements of this course. You're going to have to um, post your video response to the question and then you're going to have to make comments using the video uh, to the other students questions, at least three students. Uh, so it'll be similar to having a, 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 a real-time discussion in the classroom and you'll be able to add those threads and we'll be able to put it all together and create like a classroom discussion. Um, I might do that with one of the, uh, with the exercises just to kind of let you know how it looks in, a, in the virtual world.